Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending uh, our webinar today entitled, I Can't Afford It. Uh, I absolutely promise you that the content that we have prepared, prepared for you for this webinar uh, will be something that you potentially will benefit from in a huge way. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on this subject and contextualizing it in such a way that I believe that everyone on the call uh, will be able to walk away with some actionable items that they can actually take away from this that they can begin doing something with today. I'm going to absolutely promise you that that's going to likely happen for you today. Uh, I am grateful for the over uh, 150 or 60 people who have signed up for this webinar. Uh, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day uh, to really be a part of this Discover Leadership training uh, program focused on really helping you to create a better version of yourself. Uh, so let's jump into it. Uh, with everything at Discover Leadership Training, before we begin, uh, we want to first of all talk about what is the outcome of this particular webinar entitled, I Can't Afford It. So our outcome is to create a positive conversation in our minds. Truly believe that what we want is available to us at any given moment. So before we begin talking about the benefits, just so I can kind of get a sense of what mindset you're in uh, when you hear the title of the webinar, I can't afford it, uh, each of you can see that you have the opportunity uh, to actually type in a message uh, in the chat section uh, of this software. So. If you think that the specific focus of this webinar is going to be around money or material things, uh, just simply uh, put a message in there, type a message in there, yes, that's what I think that it's going to be about, that's what I'm expecting, or no, I'm expecting something a little deeper uh, than that as it relates to the content. So every one of you has an opportunity uh, to actually participate in that chat. So. Uh, just type in a message or two just so we can see who's here and who's involved. And uh, it's going to be an experiential kind of process. Anyway, uh, so I really want you to start participating uh, in being a part of the experience. Uh, I tell people all the time that uh, in order to get something, you got to give something. If you don't give something, uh, then you very likely will not get something. And if you do, get something in the context of that. It will not be something that you can replicate. You'll have to wait for somebody else to give it to you again. So I really encourage you to participate uh, in this webinar and give something to it uh, in order for you to get something from it. So again, the outcome uh, is to create a positive conversation in our minds, truly believing that what we want is available to us at any given moment. And thank you, I'm starting to see some of those comments. Thank you for that. All right, so let's look at some of the benefits that we believe are possible for each of you out of this webinar. Uh, so first of all, we believe that some of the benefits that you will experience as a result of making this investment of this one hour of your time into this webinar is that you will become more committed to the outcomes that you are setting as a result of the information that we are about to awaken you to. We also believe that this seminar, this webinar is going to broaden your vision to see more of what's available. So the context of vision uh, that I'm speaking of here is your ability to see more of what is available to you. Thirdly, we believe that one of the benefits that you will receive uh, from the webinar today is that you will become more deliberate with your actions. And if you happen to have a pencil or pen or piece of paper in front of you, I want you to write down the word deliberate. Deliberate in the last year and a half or two years has become one of my absolute favorite words because it has allowed me to live at another whole level uh, than the one that I was living at many, many years ago. Uh, it's allowed me to take it to my next level. So if, if you happen to have something or the ability to write or type that word down, I want you to write it down because I believe that when we're done here, you will see the importance of 
putting the word deliberate into your vocabulary in a very special place uh, and begin utilizing and demonstrating uh, what it means to be more deliberate uh, with your actions. And lastly, we believe that one of the benefits that you will likely receive uh, from this webinar is that you will truly believe that and realize that everything is possible. Now, I know that for every last one of us, we've been taught and told over and over again that anything is possible. Uh, and, uh, and quite uh, often, <laughs> what, what, what I have realized is that even though many of us say that we have that as a belief, as soon as something pushes us beyond our belief or into the realm of what we would believe is unrealistic, basically what we are saying is that everything really is not possible. So in order for us to ever utilize the word unrealistic, it means that it is impossible for us to realize that anything is possible. Because if anything is possible, the word unrealistic has no meaning at all as it relates to the vocabulary. So once again, I want to make sure that we can connect here. Any time you use or you hear the word unrealistic, you are literally saying that anything is not possible. You are saying that there are limitations to the things that are possible. And what I'm saying to you is that once you see unrealistic, the only thing that you will have identified for yourself is your capacity to believe. Where unrealistic begins is where your belief ends. Okay, so let's talk about something that is in chapter three of one of my books. Uh, in fact, I think the book that this one is in is entitled Change Your Mind, Change Your World. In chapter three, it talks about the flag or the wind. Now, I believe in every instance that we're in, we are either the flag or we are the wind. The flag in the context of this conversation is very deliberate. The flag is, is, is very undeliberate, excuse me. It, it is waiting for uh, something or somebody to accept it. It's very passive. It's waiting for a bigger energy or the biggest energy to come around and set its direction. It's always waiting for something to happen, waiting on permission, and it's waiting on the proper resources to show up for it to get involved in whatever is going on in that moment. It's just a nice visual and a nice metaphor for people who are standing on the sidelines, existing, waiting for life to happen to them. And quite often, once those forces come that somehow create something for them, they then realize that they don't have the capacity to be able to replicate that because they will need something or somebody else to show up in order for that to work. Let's just say that we will consider that an event. So they are the flag. In the context of this conversation, the wind accepts personal responsibility for the direction that the flag is blowing in. It makes things happen. The wind takes the initiative for something to occur. The wind chooses the direction of the flag. It makes it happen, and it makes it happen now. The wind, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, is not concerned about what other people think about its direction. And the biggest wind that is affecting that flag is determining the flag's direction. There may be many other forces working in that same moment, but the biggest energy in that moment is going to prevail. And it's important that we started with this understanding because of where we're ultimately going. So let's look at two words. And I would like to have you write both of them down uh, because uh, it's going to be important. One of them I've, I've mentioned to you already. The other one is contextualize. Because when we're asking ourselves a question, can I afford it? We've got to be able to contextualize what it is. The only way for us to hold ourselves accountable for having a BDO, what I like to refer to as a big, deliberate outcome, the only way for us to hold ourselves accountable for our big, deliberate outcome is we have to identify and define what our it is. 
So when I say I can afford it or I can't afford it, we, we need to know specifically what the it is. Now, Here's the definition of that word that I told you uh, has become so very important to me. Uh, deliberate, made, given, or done with full awareness, full awareness of what is of what one is doing, conscious, intentional, purposeful, willful. Now, look at all of the power and energy in those words as it relates to what is available to us when we are deliberate. So please write both of those words down for us because I believe that you will find some significance in them as we get into the webinar here. So what is your it in the context of this conversation that we're having right now? So when you say that I can't afford it, the one thing that I want you to be aware of, if you don't remember anything else that I say during this webinar, I want you to remember this. As soon as you say, I can't afford it, you have just empowered all of the negative forces in the universe to work against you to prove that you're right. As soon as you say, I can't afford it, you are basically saying that I'm not worthy of that. I'm not committed to it. It's not available to me. And as soon as you do that, once again, I want you to be able to visualize and see all of these forces in the universe now that you have empowered to make you right in the context of the conversation that you are having with yourself. And, and for those of you that are on the phone that know nothing about Discover Leadership Training, I, I want to tell you why that's possible so that you can see it for yourself. Energy and action follows our thoughts. We are giving permission to all of the forces in the universe with our thoughts and our conversations that we are having with ourselves to either work for us or to work against us. So if you look at an I can't afford it attitude, you have already created negativity. Now, there are some folks that say, well, if somebody says that they're being realistic. Well, if they're being realistic, then what they are saying is that they do not believe that anything is possible. And so I want, I want you to get your head around that as it relates to where we are going. I believe that everything that you want, and I am not just talking about material stuff. In fact, you'll find that this webinar is not about material stuff at all. I believe that everything that you want is available to you. The first thing that you got to do is believe it before you see it. If you have to wait to see it before you believe it, uh, I am going to make a prediction here in my expert opinion. There's a very good likelihood that you're never going to see it if that is what you are requiring in order to be able to believe it, to see it first. So let's kind of jump in here a little bit. When we have a big deliberate outcome, we have now contextualized our behavior, our thoughts, and everything else that follows. So I wanna give us an opportunity to kind of practice this as we get into the meat of this particular webinar. Uh, first of all, so I want you to, first of all, become familiar with that My Mood button because you're gonna be using it here in a moment. So first of all, if we were to practice this, uh, setting a very positive outcome, let's say my, my big deliberate outcome is to get up 10 minutes earlier for the rest of the week. So, so I wanna keep this small and simple as possible to start here. My big deliberate outcome is to get up 10 minutes earlier. So I want you to, to use the chat section and type in what would be some of the benefits for you to get up 10 minutes earlier. So just wanna hear from a few of you there. Just go ahead and type in a few of your thoughts as it relates in the chat about what would be a benefit of getting up 10 minutes early. So a simple, big, deliberate outcome.
Very good. Thank thank you all for that that, that that participation. So 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 let's dive in a little deeper here. Since since we got some folks uh, really participating here, um, I I want you to go to the my mood button, uh, and and click on the thumbs up or the yes if you would like to be unmuted and respond to this. So I, I am now making a commitment to get up ten minutes earlier. And you have now identified some of the benefits of doing that. Uh, what I'd like to do now is hear from a couple of y'all's personally. I'd like to hear your voices as it relates to some of those benefits that you just said you know you would get from setting a simple outcome from getting up 10 minutes earlier. So if you'd love to come in here, uh, how, how about you, Mr. Jeff Swikowski in uh, Colorado? So, Jeff, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. We can hear you just fine. So, so talk to me a little bit about that, Jeff. What, what would be some of the benefits of, of of setting my alarm clock ten minutes earlier than I normally do? So, my uh, beautiful wife is quite the morning person, and uh, in my history, I have not been, but ten minutes of quality time with her without having to deal with kids or anything. Beautiful. Thank, thank you for that. And it's so good to see you out here and see you still participating in this, man. Love you and I miss you. Hopefully we'll talk again soon. Uh, so let, let, let's listen to a couple of more here, uh, Stephen. Uh, how, how about Mr. Richard Gibbs? Hey, Richard, uh, what, you got a comment for us here? No, well, I would just, um, I'd like to, I'd, I'd just get more out of the day. I would be able to, if I chose to exercise or if I chose to just, just start out early, earlier and just, just have more time, you know, to uh, get things accomplished during the day. Absolutely. Thank, and th thank you for your participation, Richard. Thank you. Uh, we want to hear one more. Uh, how about out in California there, Stephen? Uh, Rhonda Wycox. I always mess that name up. Wycocka. <laughs> um, for me, that just that gift of time that I lose focus on giving to myself. You know, I am so focused on making sure I spend time with the kids and getting the things that work done. And that 10 minutes, just a quiet me time to journal, meditate, those things that I admittedly choose not to do because I am not getting up early or I'm not making the choice to, to put that there. Beautiful. Thank, thank you for your participation as well, Rhonda. And uh, so, so, so let's dive a little deeper in here. I want to give you another example, and then I want to address both of them at at, at one time. So let, let's say that, let's say that we set a big deliberate outcome of drinking half of our body weight in water every day for the next week. What would be the benefit of drinking half of my body weight in water for the next? week or so what would be some of the benefits of doing that so again please just take a moment to use the, the, the chat section there and, and and just allow your mind to be creative and think about what would be some of uh, yeah lots of bathroom breaks absolutely would be yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Ha most of your body half your body weight in ounces uh for for the next week A be beautiful comment. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're having to have to manage y'all being mute for y'all killing my ears over here. That's awesome. That, that, that's a, those are great comments. Okay, so. Uh, once again, I want a couple of y'all to go to the My Mood button and, and click on it if you'd like to just kind of come in here and, and have a word about that particular one, uh, because your comments are the ones that are going to make this webinar absolutely fabulous, and I'm promising you that. I got a couple of good ones off the, off the other one. So go to the My Mood button and, uh, and tap the thumbs up uh, if you'd like to come in here and just say a little bit more about that. Yeah, weight loss, clean systems, cleaner skin, hydration, all, all that's really good stuff. Uh, how about you, Mr. Musetti, Joseph Musetti, 
great, great hearing from you from New York there, sir. Uh, why don't you share with us uh, your thoughts on that? Hey, Joe, can you hear me? We we can yeah we can see that he was talking. So so Joe, you may need to unmute yourself. Is it star six? Okay, Joe, I'm sorry we, we we're not being able to pick you up. How about, how about Abby Martin up there? I, can can you hear me, Abby? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's your How's comment on this? It's going great. Well, about a year ago, I used to drink pop and water, or pop and coffee a lot, and now I basically only drink water, and I lost a bunch of weight just because of that, and uh, I'm definitely a lot healthier as an athlete. That's awesome. Thank you, Abby, for that. Thank you for your participation. Uh, see if we can get one more here, Stephen. Uh, hey, Joe, we're going to give you another shot here. See if we can get you here, Joe. Go for it, Joe. So, so, Joe, we can hear you, so let's go ahead and speak. Okay, it's not working, Joe. All right, so so, so let's, let's go with Abby's comment. We had a couple more here, uh, but uh, which one you want to do with it? Okay, so, so let's just move on. So I, I want you to think about those two big d deliberate outcomes that we were just talking about as it relates to getting up 10 minutes earlier and looking at all of that stream of benefits that was, were in the chat bar uh, during that particular uh, opportunity. And then drinking the half of your body weight in water in ounces uh, and looking at all of the benefits that would occur as a result of that. Uh, what I'm gonna say is how can you not afford to follow through on those commitments when you know the benefits. So, so, so remember we're going here because this is ultimately going somewhere. When you set a big deliberate outcome, once you have set the outcome, you have now contextualized your behavior. So there is no way to determine appropriate or inappropriate, good or bad, positive or negative, if you have not set a big deliberate outcome. Once the outcome has been set, a very specific one, like drinking half of my body weight in water or getting up 10 minutes earlier, it is very clear to me when I know the benefits of doing that, that I cannot not afford to do what I said I was going to do. So it means that I really need to be committed to it. So I want to say something. You may want to write this down because I, I just wrote this uh, this morning and I found that the more I read it and the more that I've shared it with people today, it, it sounds very, very special to me. So you may want to write this down. So I want to say this out loud. Quite often in the context of how we are being in the world, we always wonder that sometimes it seems like we're giving too much at the beginning of something. And then there comes a time where we learn that we held back for too long. Well, how do I know how much to give in this present moment? Because when we feel like we've given too much at the beginning of something, or then we come to realize that we held back too long, what we, what we have identified is what I like to refer to as the dance of imperfection a ways uh, for us to continually live in a truth that we are imperfect beings. It is possible, ladies and gentlemen, for me to deliver perfection when I have a very specific, big, deliberate outcome, because I have contextualized for myself what good and bad, what powerful and, and weak is, what positive and negative is, by setting the outcome. And with that outcome, if I am truly committed to the outcome, the only thing that I need to do in that moment is whatever is necessary for me to take the next step in the direction of that big deliberate outcome. 
And, you know, when I was talking to Jeff earlier, he was talking about the fact that his wife was an incredible morning person and that that 10 minutes would allow him an opportunity to get up and spend some more quality time with her in the morning. I mean, when you know that you have those types of benefits, how can you not afford it? Getting up at 10 minutes earlier. You have now identified your driver for getting up or the reason, your why for getting up. So I've spent a little time talking to you about this. And before we go on, I would like to hear the comments that you are having right now with yourself as it relates to what you've heard and how you've benefited so far. I mean, I really love to do that to kind of help finish this off in a very special way. So I want to say this again, because this may kind of get you thinking one more time. Every time you say, I can't afford it, you empower all of the forces in the universe to bring all of the things into your path to make you right. You are going to be the prophet in the context of your belief, the conversation that you're having with yourself. As soon as you say it, you have now contextualized how everything around you is going to happen and whether or not you'll even be able to see the resources that are available to you just based upon the conversation that you are having with yourself. So I would love to hear from a few of you before I go any deeper into this uh, and uncover for you what this is really going to be about for today. But I would like to hear what you've heard so far, because one of the things that I'm very crystal clear of is it really doesn't matter what we say. What always matters is what you heard. And I'd like to know what you've heard so far. So a couple of folks uh, go to the My Mood button and uh, click on the, the thumbs up. Give us an indication that you would love to come in and have a comment, uh, a little debrief on what you've heard so far, uh, what you've gotten so far, uh, any benefit that you've gotten so far. So please just go to that My Mood button and uh, click on the, the thumbs up for us real quickly. Yeah, I, I wish we could bring you in here, Namitra, but uh, you, you, you don't have the ability to be able to talk to us. Let's see if we can get a couple of more here. Okay, so, so let's go back to Mr. Mr. Gibbs real quickly then. So, so we're going to bring you back in, Mr. Gibbs. What, what have you heard so far? How have you benefited? Uh, so far, I've heard that um, I would definitely like to be the wind you know, uh, in terms of um, not waiting to be accepted and, and, you know, just not being passive. I, I heard also um, that becoming more more committed to the outcome, you know, will give you more, um, just better, better results. And, um, you know, getting up 10 minutes earlier, how you, for me, I can get more out of the day, whether that be exercising, whether that be, better planning and just, just getting more. And then uh, the drinking half of your body weight um, in, in water, in ounces of water, um, you know, I got really clear on that, and I appreciate you sharing that with me because that's something I'm going to definitely start doing. And just becoming committed to, um, you know, my BDO. Thanks a lot, Richard. Thanks for participating as well. Uh, how, how about you? Uh, is it Lyle Reed? Oh, I know who that is. Absolutely. Hey, yeah, come, come on in and speak to us. Hey, good afternoon, Mike. Yes, it's Lale. Um, hey, I think I think the thing that, that is hitting home to me, um, especially having just come back from a master leadership graduate class, is um, having the BDO will help bring all of the things that I am interested in playing full out. It brings a lot of focus. It makes it a lot easier to start achieving the goals that I'm setting for myself. And And I think the other thing that was really key to me was everything you want is available to you that you're worthy of it that it just it takes the commitment and the focus and and using a bdo would help you achieve those things that, that, that's awesome absolutely awesome uh and uh and jeff i know that you have something that you want to saw what your little chat was so please come back in here uh and have a word with us jeff go ahead uh hi mike i'm back um hey. yes, i'm looking at Put everything in perspective. 
have a big family move, and I was just talking to my ex on the family, you know, like how I can lead family and. Very good. Yeah, I think we kind of lost you a little bit there, Jeff, but thank you uh, for your participation. Uh, so, so, so let's take a couple more steps into this uh, and, and, and see how well you guys are connecting. So I want to ask a question, and I would like to get participation from everybody on the call. Uh, and, and so here, here, here is my very first question. So I want you to go to my mood button uh, and click on the my mood button. And if you agree with this, uh, then say a thumbs up. If you disagree, then I want you to go thumbs down. I, I am going to submit to you that where your big deliberate outcome is concerned and where you as a person, a human being on this planet is concerned, that it is never okay to be the flag. So once again, I wanna make sure that you understand what I'm saying. I am saying that in every relationship that you have, everything that you are doing, it is never okay to be the flag. So if you agree, I'm asking for a thumbs up. If you disagree, thumbs down. And those of you that are participating, thank you. Just about to have 100% participation here, not quite yet, but still working on it. So again, is it okay, okay to not be the flag? Okay, so yeah, so we got we got a got a lot of participation there. So let's just jump in here real quick. So the reason I I am going to submit that it is never okay not to be the flag is because I believe that one of the greatest gifts that we have as human beings is the gift of choice. I am going to submit that we are always at choice. There are 86,400 seconds in every day. In every one of those seconds, you are at choice. Now, I want you to remember that as we get into this, this next slide. First of all, I'm going to submit that once you have established and defined your big deliberate outcome, you've contextualized it, you cannot afford not to do whatever it takes to get to what you want. Whatever it takes is always available to you. It may be a tough choice that you may need to make, but I am submitting that whatever you want is available and whatever it takes is always available to you. Not doing whatever it takes, ladies and gentlemen, is literally saying I can't afford it. Not doing whatever it takes is basically submitting that you are a victim in that particular moment. And I am going to submit to you that it is my expert opinion that there are no victims in the context of this conversation. There are only volunteers. And the reason that you are volunteering is because you are making the choice to either push beyond whatever roadblock, whatever obstacle is in your way in relation to that big deliberate outcome. I am submitting to you in this present moment that whatever step is necessary for you to take to move beyond the obstacle is available to you. I'm not saying that it wouldn't be tough. I'm not saying that it would not be challenging. What I am saying is that it is available to you. So I would submit to you that if you're truly committed to that big deliberate outcome, make the choice to take on the toughest stuff that gets in your way because I absolutely guarantee you that you are building the muscle to be able to replicate it the next time something tough happens to you. And when you say that it's not available to you, you're basically saying that you're not committed to it. Because what I'm saying to you is that it is always, always available to you. So let's take a step further into this. When we have set our big deliberate outcome, and, and let's just say we were focused on creating a better version of ourselves. What, what I would have you do once you set your outcome, whatever it ultimately is for you, I want you 
to get a piece of paper, write the word positive at the top of it and the word negative at the top of it. On the positive side, I want you to list, come up with all of the positive benefits for, 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 for creating that big deliberate outcome and then come up with all of the negative consequences if you don't. What I'm saying is that when you put skin on this, when you do the work, when you literally can understand and quantify the benefit of the outcome, you have now given yourself a driver and a purpose for truly doing whatever is necessary in every given moment to obtain and manifest that big deliberate outcome. So let's take a look at this one. So let's say that I set a big deliberate outcome. My big deliberate outcome is to create a better version of myself. So I look at the reason why I would do that. So I've got to be able to answer my why because every action that I take is going to create a story. And the story is my why. So if my why is focused on the positive, then it means my why is because I'm going to be healthier mentally and physically, that I'm going to live longer potentially, that I'm going to lower the risk of chronic disease. I'm going to feel better. And all of those positive things that are listed under the positive benefits of creating a better version of myself. So now if I look at all of the consequences or the negatives of becoming a dormant individual who's just sitting on the sidelines waiting to die, never really growing or finding a way to better myself, understanding that we all occupy the largest room in the house, then I'm going to become complacent. I'm going to have a victim's mentality where I don't believe that I have the power over all of this stuff that's happening in my life. I'm going to have poor health. I'll have a low self-image. I'm going to be lazy. I will be a procrastinator. I'm going to have a negative attitude, and I will have a higher risk of chronic disease. So I would have you ask yourself in the context of this conversation that if my BDO was creating a better version of myself, I cannot afford not to be committed to that in every given moment. Because every time I lose focus or I am not committed, then I am now empowering all of that negative stuff on the other side of that list now to have an opportunity to become my reality. So again, I want to take a quick moment there. I got a few minutes here and I, 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 we just put some really cool stuff out there. So I want, to, I want to hear what you heard and I want to kind of hear how you're applying it in your own thinking and, 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 and the way that you may be benefiting from this. So once again, I want you to go to the my mood button and uh, click on the thumbs up and come in and have a comment. You know, and if that's something that would be uncomfortable for you to do. Uh, it is radio. It's not TV. So, uh, I mean, it's going to be all right. I promise you won't die after you just you know clicked on that and had a word here uh, on this webinar. So let's go to Mr. Jared Thomas. So, so Jared, uh, speak with us, sir. Uh, what, what are you getting so far? Jared Thomas? Okay, so I uh, get a couple of more of y'all to go to my, my mood button and click on that button for us real quick here. Hey, how about you, Mr. John Gilmore? You got John Gilmore there, Stephen? Hey, hey, John, can you hear us? Mike, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. You know, this this technology is just not uh, perfected yet, but thank you for coming in. Share, share with us what your thoughts are so far. You know, I've got a uh, project coming up next week with one of my customers, but I already started to visualize uh, that being very Well, thank you for that, John. We got some really cool information coming for you here in this, this last 10 minutes here, so stick with us here. Uh, let's hear from Mr. Rick Cope, and then we'll move on here. How about you, Rick? What are you getting so far? Just so inspiring to be involved in all this. Very, very good. Uh, beautiful. You're still recovering from your weekend, huh? Yeah. 
That's awesome, baby. Well, well, thank you for being out here with us. Uh, let, let, let's jump into this a little further and, and, and put a big old pretty bow, powerful bow on where this is ultimately going. So this is the one thing I want to submit to you. It, it does not matter what your big deliberate outcome is. Let's say it's creating a better version of yourself. Let's say it's having a healthier relationship. Let's say that your biggest deliberate outcome is set is to buy a bigger house or get a different car, get a new position at work, uh, what, 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 be happier in your relationships. What, whatever that deliberate outcome is, first of all, it is called a deliberate outcome is because you have made the conscious choice to set the outcome. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't take the time to be deliberate about setting the outcome that you want out of things, then you really don't know if the behavior that you are demonstrating in this moment is going to get you to what you really, really want. So uncovering for yourself and being very specific what that outcome is will now give you something to hold yourself accountable to. I can tell you this from experience. As soon as you set the outcome and you have the courage to take the first step to manifest something that you have never experienced or to get something that you have never had before, that first step is going to be tough. I want you to be aware of that. But this is where it really starts to sound somewhat insane, especially for people who have not had our training. But I really want you to connect here. I want you to become aware that in the context of this conversation, tough is one of the greatest gifts that you're going to receive. Whatever is challenging about that first step and the consequent, the, 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 the steps that follow, those are some of the greatest gifts that you are going to receive. Because what is happening when you say, I can afford it, I will manifest this outcome, this big deliberate outcome, into existence, as soon as you do that, you have now increased your periphery to be able to see all of the resources in the universe that are available to you. Some of them are going to be tougher for you to get your arms around because they are things that are outside of your comfort zone. But what I want you to know is that every time you have the courage to do it, you are building muscle that you can replicate taking a bigger step the next time you get the opportunity. So I encourage you, once you set that big deliberate outcome, to then have the courage to sit down and be clear about what your drivers are, what are the benefits, look at the consequences of not doing it, so you can know that you cannot not afford to do this. You cannot not afford to take that step right now. It's challenging, it's tough. Embrace tough. That sounds insane, I get that. I want you to fall in love with tough. Get your arms around tough. Because tough, in the context of this conversation, when you are being deliberate, is going to be one of the greatest gifts that you have. So I'm encouraging you to be deliberate today about what you will do to get to those very positive outcomes that you have set. So after you do that, what you will recognize is that a commitment means that you are going to move forward no matter how challenging it is. Every time one of those circumstances comes up, I guarantee you it is an opportunity for you to authenticate your commitment. That circumstance is a, is, is a gift of authentication because every time you authenticate that commitment, you are now allowing yourself to embrace tough to the extent that sooner or later, tough is going to become a piece of cake for you. But if you don't take it on, it's just going to remain tough, which means that you're going to be in suffering. So I, I, would, I would rather take it on tough. And I know that there's probably some of you out there that would agree with me because you've been in this, this game. I would rather take on tough any day than to sit on the sidelines in suffering, knowing that something else is available to me, even though it's scary. It's like the boogeyman sitting back in the dark waiting to get me. Know that that boogeyman is there because it is. It's lurking in the dark by way of a circumstance or an obstacle, 
But that boogeyman happens to be one of the greatest gifts that you are going to receive in the context of this conversation. So I encourage every last one of you to set a big term, a big deliberate outcome today. Whatever it is, whether it's a, as it relates to your relationships, whether it relates to your job, whether it relates to the relationship with your children, whether it relates to the relationship that you're having with yourself, set a big deliberate outcome today. Quantify what the benefits are. Identify for yourself what the consequences would be and really get your arms around why that is a big deliberate outcome for you. Now, I want you to recognize something because sometimes people have a challenge with this part. We're calling it a big deliberate outcome, but in the context of this conversation, big is relative, relative to whatever it is that you want to make the outcome be. The biggest part of what I want you to walk away is deliberate outcome. So it can be any size that you want it to be, but I guarantee you as soon as you set a deliberate outcome, it is going to become big because it is going to require you to be on purpose, to truly get out of that comfort zone and to truly deliberately hold yourself accountable to deliver on some stuff that's going to be somewhat uncomfortable for you at some point in the journey. However, I encourage you to take action now. I assure you that this is not a dress rehearsal, ladies and gentlemen. This is our opportunity to take action now. Because in the 86,400 seconds that are in this day, the only one that matters in the context of this conversation as it relates to you moving forward to your big deliberate outcome is the moment that you're in right now. So take full advantage of this moment with whatever resources that you have to take that step to your outcome. Now, I can tell you, after having done this for a while, I hear people saying all the time that I can't afford it means that I don't have all of the resources necessary to have what I want right now. And that is not the truth. So please hear me. In this present moment, Whatever you have is all that you need because the only step that needs to be taken in order to manifest that outcome is the one that is specifically focused on 100% of what you have right now. So utilize all of the resources that you have right now. No holding back. Play full out. Understanding that winners lose more often than losers lose. And if you are really willing to play at this level, then you are going to become aware very quickly that you are going to fall down. First of all, I would encourage you, once you set that big deliberate outcome, if you fall down, be kind to yourself. Get up, dust yourself off, and go for it again. And continue to change your approach to to get to a different outcome. Uh, As long as you're truly committed, that is all that will be required for you to do. So what is that relational big deliberate outcome that you want to set. What are the benefits of that big deliberate outcome? I want you to truly have the courage to make a commitment to make it happen. Whether it's a relational one, whether it's a professional one, whether it's one that deals specifically with your health, I want you to set that outcome and set it today and come up with those benefits and make that happen for you. So in these last few moments, I really want to listen to some of the comments from some of you as it relates to what you have gotten from this webinar so far and how you will apply the benefits that you have received in this brief uh, time that we have had together discussing big, deliberate outcomes. So if you would please go over to the My Mood button and click on the thumbs up. Uh, Stephen and I will bring you in here and uh, let you have a final comment here uh, before we end uh, in these brief eight minutes that we have left. So please uh, go to that My Mood button and click on that. uh, And uh, we'd love to hear from you. So Corin, I wish we could bring you in, but you're not connected. Uh, How about a couple of more of y'all clicking in here and letting us uh, hear from you? as it relates to the benefits uh, that you've gotten so far. You know, it's kind of like our classes, all of the same people uh, are jumping up to the front of the room wanting to participate. Uh, 
have you have you not spoken yet? Why don't you just jump in here and and, and have a word with us real quickly? And, and I appreciate all of y'all that have spoken and are still jumping in there. Uh, let, let, let's hear from and, and and stay engaged. I may get to you anyway. Uh, how about you, Cindy Barnett? Let's let's hear from your uh, girlfriend. Uh, what have you gotten so far? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I hear you very nice and collaborative. Awesome. Okay. Nice. All right. So I uh, was a little late joining the the conference here, but what what I can tell you is these big deliberate outcomes are scary and. Every day I have to tell myself, you got this. I've got everything I need. Now the steps, so I'm doing my um, compelling stories, sticking with my affirmations. What I did not do and what I've taken away from your program today is to to put the, to really stay what is the negative side by not doing it. So in my mind and on paper, Paper, I write down the positive side, but I haven't really verbalized or I've been in avoidance of writing down the negative side. So um, I do appreciate that because it makes it real and it does become a motivator. So I appreciate um, making, you know, helping me clarify how important both sides of that equation are. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cindy. Thank, and thank you for your participation. You know, beautiful thing about what, what, what Cindy said, and, and I really do appreciate uh, that, is that when we look at the whole picture, uh, we have even more motivation for taking the step forward. And, and I can tell you that was not one of those things that I used to teach because I didn't realize how important it is. But I've recently become aware that when people look at the whole picture, they have even more motivation for continuing to move forward and make the decisions that are going to benefit them moving forward. Because sometimes some of those negative motivators may be bigger than the positive ones to get you moving forward. Whatever the energy is that gets you out of that place where you're stuck, we want to take advantage of every resource that's available to move us forward, still focus on our outcome so that we can get after it. So, Corinne, it looks like you did what you needed to to be able to talk to us. So, come on in here. Yeah, I was able to connect here. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. And, and if you could talk a little bit more directly into the phone area, it will be a little bit better. All right. So, one of the things that I think was really incredibly valuable was when you said to fall in love with tough because it is actually a gift when I am being deliberate and to really make that choice because when I know what the benefits are from my positive outcome, and if I am not choosing to make those steps towards accomplishing that, I'm actually choosing to give up those benefits and, and not have them. And if I really know what those benefits are, how can I possibly make a choice to not have those benefits? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you make my point so well, and you say it so eloquently, and I appreciate you coming in here because I can guarantee you somebody benefited from that. Uh, and thank you very much, Corey. Uh, and, and you know, I just want to echo what Corinne just said. I mean, uh, when you know what you know as it relates to the benefits, how can you not afford it? I mean, because as soon as you say, I can't afford it, then you are in that moment giving the power to everything in the universe to keep you from and prevent you from having those things that you really, really, really want. And I want all of you to know, and I know that some of you who have experienced our processes know this, but if there's somebody here that, that hasn't, and I know that there are, I want you to know that positive and negative are both always available to you in every given moment. The one that you are choosing in that moment is the one that you are the most committed to because at every given moment you are at choice as it relates to positive and negative. And any time you choose negative, I can absolutely guarantee you that that will never benefit you in relationship to getting to that big deliberate outcome that you set. 
So realize as you move forward, ladies and gentlemen, there are no victims, only volunteers. You are always that choice. It is one of the greatest gifts that we've all received and that everything that you want, everything that you want is absolutely available to you. You can absolutely afford it. You are absolutely worth it. So I encourage you to become more purposeful and deliberate in everything that you're doing and every choice that you are making. Be bold and confident and take a powerful step forward. And when Murphy shows up, when Tuff shows up, when those obstacles show up, when all of those things that are coming into your view are there to prevent you from getting there, embrace them fall in love with them, appreciate them, because they are authenticators that says in that moment, I am committed to this and I will move forward whatever it takes. So thank each and every last one of you for being here with us uh, on the, this webinar. Oh my God, I enjoyed this so much and I hope that you did as well and that you benefited from it. The hour just seems to go by so incredibly fast. For those of you that are still working on you, uh, we have a nice little t-shirt that you can wear while you're working out or jogging or reading or whatever it is that you're doing as you are creating that better version of yourself. Uh, it's, a, it's a dry fit shirt. It also comes in a nice hoodie for those of y'all that are still in those nice, cool uh, climates. Uh, but go to our website and order your Creating a Better Version of Myself t-shirt uh, and be very deliberate about doing that for yourself because you absolutely matter. You absolutely count. Uh, and everything that you're doing is going to affect something in a positive or a negative way. So be very deliberate about creating that better version of yourself. And I want you all to know that we're going to be back out in Salisbury, Maryland, uh, by popular demand, uh, conducting another one of our Game Changer programs. Uh, so please go to our website for more information about that. And our next local Game Changer program here in Houston, Texas, is on September the 24th. Uh, so please go out and enroll in that one if you happen to be somewhere in the Houston metropolitan area, uh, any of the adjoining cities. So our next webinar is going to be uh, Tuesday, June the 16th, 2015, and it is focused on performative speaking, the winning conversation. And I absolutely guarantee you that there is information there that will benefit you in everything that you got going on right now. So once again, please join us Tuesday, June 16th at 2015 at 1 p.m. Central for performative speaking, the winning conversation. And thank each and every last one of you for being here uh, from all over the country, all over the world, and all of my good friends out there in Alaska. Great seeing you guys this past weekend as well. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you. Uh, at a graduation or on our next webinar soon. Uh, have an incredible day. And yes, ma'am and sirs, it is indeed another great day to be alive.